Here we go, y'all. We have the saga of Lara Logan. Laura? Laura Logan? Lara Logan? Whatever. However you say it. I don't really care. Um, she went on Newsmax, and um, she... <laughs> the comments she makes were so extreme that even Newsmax, whose whole lane is we are to the right of Fox News, even they were like, I don't know, dog. I don't know. We're not going to invite her back because this is a little... So anyway, let me show you. I got a couple clips here for you. Let me show you this first one. Credit to Ron Filipkowski, who uh, who got this. Let's do it. But you know what? It's even bigger than that because um, I, you know, I, I spoke to a man who was actually holding the documents in his hand. He told me about it. Right? He said he was uh, he infiltrated the global uh, cabal at the UN level. Right? And one of the things that he uh, was able to um, to to tell me about from his own personal experience, what he witnessed himself was uh, these documents that show that the plan, there is a plan, and this was several years ago, right? The plan was to infiltrate 100 million illegal immigrants. And at that point, they were already... Okay, let's pause this here. The plan at the UN is to send 100 million illegal immigrants into the United States? Okay, the UN is the United Nations. It includes the, the you know ambassadors from every single nation why would they why would they have a plan to send 100 million immigrants into the United States and I don't know if you've been paying attention Laura Logan but under Republican administrations and Democratic administrations they're pretty fucking tough on that border pretty tough on that border Title 42, remain in Mexico, Trump trying to build the wall, Biden having a, a litany of times throughout his career where he said he supports some sort of a fence or structure along the border. He's a classic, old school, tough on crime liberal whose policies reflect that, and he's always been kind of tough on the border. Obama was called the deporter in chief. He broke records for deportation. Biden was his VP. For most of his time in office now, Biden has kept in place Title 42 and remain in Mexico. There's been a lot of deportations. So this, this notion is just debunked by the empirical evidence, but this is such a fucking crazy conspiracy. Why does it always come back to immigration with these people? Again, we just talked about this in the other segment, but like, so many far-right beliefs just, when you really scrutinize them, they just collapse into fascism. <laughs> like, it's always like, you know, the, the scary racial minorities are are, you know, diluting the, the pure blood white American pool, and that's not okay, and, and we need to stop that. Okay, well, what do you want to call that? What kind of label do you want to put on those sorts of political beliefs? What do you want to call that? We need to stop the brown immigration here. I'll let you pick the word for that. Go ahead. <laughs> at 40 million and these people would dilute what they called the pool of patriots those were their words right and they would not be taught that america is a great country and trained to sing the national anthem with pride and so on and so on they would be taught all the negative things that were taught about the u.s today that are i love this i love this one of the constant criticisms from the right is that the left are triggered snowflakes and they just don't like inconvenient facts bro well guess what Facts don't care about your feelings. I'm here to tell the truth, even the uncomfortable truths. And then you have Lara Logan out there like, they don't even want to say the national anthem and get taught that America is the greatest country of all time, that we're the best and we're special and our poopy doesn't stinky. <laughs> okay, yes, are they going to teach some bad things about the country in school? Yes, they should, because there are some bad things about the country. Am I saying everything's bad? Of course not. Teach the good things, teach the bad things. That's called putting facts first. Yeah, if you teach about the Native American genocide, the proper way to teach that is to have a value judgment and say, bad. Genocide? Bad. So, uh, oh, controversial. I don't, yeah, genocide. Not, not good. Not good. Let's go with that. Let's go with not good. Genocide, not good. Slavery, not good. Jim Crow, not good. Nuking Hiroshima and Nagasaki and killing uh, massive numbers of innocent civilians. Not good. Not good. Japanese internment, not good. Not good. I know I'm so controversial here on this show. I just say things that are fucking like, I might get banned off YouTube for saying this, right? <laughs> not good. Very basic. But now, but now, civil rights movement, great, awesome. 
That's as, as American as apple pie right there, the civil rights movement, as American as apple pie. Free speech in the Constitution, wonderful. Due process, wonderful. You know, we can have a, we can have a nuanced conversation. New Deal, wonderful. Uh, we can have a nuanced, intelligent conversation, but she doesn't want that. She doesn't want nuanced teachings in school. What does she want? Teach us that we're special and everybody turn your brain off and say the national anthem. If you talked about people in Iran, you know, worshipping their flag or singing their national song, she would accurately say, brainwashing, there's brainwashing. But when we do it, that's the right way to do it. That's the right way to teach is to brainwash. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. They're so unserious thinkers. How can you be this unserious as a thinker while taking yourself so seriously? When children are taught and and what would be the effect of diluting the pool of patriots well it would be to break down this sense of pride in being american and what it means to be american pride pride in being american pride should you have pride if you're bolivian should you have pride if you're from madagascar you should have pride over the random patch of dirt you've been born on no, you teach the good things, you teach the bad things, you teach following evidence and data and being rational and reasonable. But no, that's not that's not the way she thinks. I, this one is even better, bro. Buckle up, skis, because this one gets wild. It's right out of it's right out of the playbook. The right out of the socialist playbook. You divide and conquer. You don't tell yep. them your intent. You get people to come in. You get you. The socialist playbook is divide and conquer. That's what he just said. The socialist play playbook. You know the whole like. Workers of the world unite thing. Unite. 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 Which means get together. Which means the opposite of divide. Oh, yeah, it's, it's the socialists are divide. No, divide and conquer is what the capitalist class does. Is what the elites do. And they take cultural issues. Things like race, for example. Divide the workers along racial lines. Let them fight amongst themselves as you run out the back door with all the fucking money. That is divide and conquer. That's divide and conquer useful idiots those of us who are paying lie for these people to have lie. all these luxuries and they lie yeah. about it yeah. how's it end paying for okay so this is the classic like pff, i'm jealous of this person who came into america from honduras made an incredibly long and dangerous journey maybe got raped along the way maybe got robbed along the way because they get in this country they get everything bro they get everything we give them a luxury home with the pool in the backyard and we give them supermodels that i pff, what is, it called? what is this, bro? Why are we paying for them, bro? There's many forms of welfare they don't get, and they can't get. But they make it seem like, it's this classic, like, the rich are the victims, and the poor and working class are like, and, and these immigrants who have no money and no power, you know, they're the, they're the ones in the privileged position in society. I can't imagine ever believing that. There's not enough propaganda in the world to make me believe that. But some people eat this shit up. Well, badly. <laughs> it ends badly for some. Um, okay, so on a serious note, um, you know, people of all faiths have said to me that this is a spiritual battle. I am a firm and solid and immovable believer in God. And I believe that God will... <laughs> I can't. Are you you're just going to delegitimize everything else that's going to come out of your mouth by making that point? <laughs> I'm an immovable believer, so it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what the argument is, what the evidence is. I'm immovable in my belief in this. That's dogmatism defined. Wins. I believe that good is greater than evil, and I believe that the fallen angel, otherwise known as Satan, doesn't get to prevail in this world. So um, if you follow the Bible or if you follow the Quran or you follow uh, the Book of Mormon, you know, people talk in various different ways about the end times. And if you fight for God, God will fight for you. But people, final, humanity... Final thought, Lara, what... Final thought, though. I have to, I have to ask you this because my, my audience is, is very God-fearing, God-loving, etc. <laughs> final thought. I only a couple of seconds, please. This is, this is right-wing virtue signaling to the max. My audience, my, my God fearing, God loving, God, 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 God. They're the good. My audience, they're the good people. Unlike all the bad people who disagree with us, the people who are not worthy of even being considered humans, we're the we're the good ones. This is fucking right wing virtue signaling to the max. Um, does is God okay with a closed border? Is God okay with a closed border? 
these, the, the conversations on these shows are bonkers, dog. It's much bigger than that. God believes in that in, in sovereignty and national identity and the sanctity of family. And God believes in sovereignty and national identity. So God's a nationalist? That's what God is? Your God, Jesus, believes in? Let's arbitrarily divide ourselves. Let's do that. Let's, uh, let's separate ourselves among ethnicity and nationality. If you read the Bible, there are very few things. Are co there's contradictory stuff all over the place. But a couple things are consistent. Um, number one is be kind to the immigrants. They call them sojourners. That is super consistent in there. The other thing that's consistent is fuck the rich. Homeboy was a Marxist before Marxism was a thing. Okay? At, they just take whatever their own personal beliefs already are, their priors, and they... They put it on top of Christianity and pretend like Christianity, you know, bolsters their already held convictions. That's what they do. And all the things that we've lived with from the beginning of time. And he knows that the open border is Satan's way of taking control of the world through... The open border is Satan's way of controlling the world. I, okay, I just told you. There's endless passages in the Bible that are pro-immigrant, pro-sojourner. Treat them like they're your, like they're your family. She flipped it completely on its head and just lied about it. Satan's way of taking control of the world through all of these uh, people who are his stooges and his and his uh, servants. So now immigrants are stooges. And they may think of Satan, by the way, that they're going to become gods. That's what they tell us. You all know Harari and and all the rest of them at the World Economic Forum. You know, the ones who want us eating insects, cockroaches and that while they dine. Uh, on the blood yeah. of children. Yeah. Those are the people, right? They're not yeah. going to win. We... They're not going to win. Well, yeah. Okay, did you catch the part where she said, they dine on the blood of children? The elite cabal of globalists that dine on the blood of children. Huh, what does that remind me of? That's classic blood libel anti-Semitic trope. She didn't specifically bring up Jews there. Of course, this is all implied. But even if you put aside that aspect of this, which you shouldn't, but even if you do, let's do it just for argument's sake, let's do it. Dining on the blood of children, what the fuck are you talking about? What are you talking about? Dining on the blood of children? And, of course, um, well, not of course. In fact, this was surprising. This is the opposite of of course. The result? Even Newsmax was like, eh, I don't know, homie. I don't know about all this. Newsmax condemns in the strongest terms the reprehensible statements made by Laura Logan, and her views do not reflect our, our network, the network said in a statement. We have no plans to interview her again. Um, fascinating. So, um, genuinely surprised by this, because their whole lane is word to the right of Fox News. It makes me feel like maybe, I don't know who could have threatened legal action, but it's like maybe somebody threatened legal action, because the only other time they backed off of some insane shit was when uh, some of the voting machine companies sued the shit out of them. It was Newsmax, it was One America News, it was even Fox News, it was a Smartmat Smartmatic is one of them, and then there's another one that sued. And because they had all these things they said that were demonstrably false, this idea that, like, Maduro of Venezuela hacked the voting machines and flipped the votes to Biden. Maduro's so pro-Biden, by the way, bro. The <sighs> Total, totally bogus, and of course they were going to lose future business as a result of this. They sued for defamation. It's proceeded in court. So that was the only other time they backed off. This is the second time I've ever seen them back off, and I'm curious as to why that is. Because certainly it's not because the people who are the executives at Newsmax are, you know, reasonable <laughs> gentlemen who just looked at the comments and said, hmm, this is factually false, as is like 98% of the shit that comes out of your shitty network. Okay, and by the way, I love how... Um, Eric Bowling is sitting there casually agreeing, and she's like, and they died on the blood of children. He's like, right, right. As if she's saying something, like, non-controversial. Anyway, there you have it. Uh, she's a fucking mess. Ever since Adpocalypse, when YouTube defunded all independent news and politics overnight, we haven't trusted them. We know they can pull the rug out from underneath us at any time. If you enjoy this content, please consider tipping a dollar or two per month on the Secular Talk Patreon. Link in the video description box below. Thanks for your support.